you know the difference between a normal, a myopic and a hyperopic eye? Or would you like to know what these patients actually see in real life? Then this video is for you, so stay tuned! Hello and welcome back to learnabouteyes.com. In this episode, we're going to look at the different types of amitropia, which is basically just a fancy way of saying that somebody needs glasses. I'm on call all week, so I have to film in my office. I had to improvise a little bit, but I hope the quality is still good enough. So let's jump right in. Here you can see a normal eye, parallel light rays coming from the distance are being focused by the cornea and the lens to meet perfectly on the retina. Now what if the same eye wants to look at something closer like a book? Light rays coming from a closer source are diverging and therefore if they're being refracted by the cornea and lens the same way as before, they meet behind the retina. For the light rays to hit the retina, we need to increase our refraction and we do that by activating our ciliary muscle and thereby increasing the thickness of the lens. Now that you know how the normal eye works, let's have a look at the amitropic eye. There are basically two types, the short-sighted or myopic eye and the far-sighted or hyperopic eye. Once again, the image of a normal eye as a quick repetition. And this is a hyperopic or farsighted eye. Hyperopic means that the light rays meet behind the retina instead of on the retina. This can be caused by two things, either that the eye is too short as you see in this picture or that the refraction is too strong. In this video we're just gonna focus on the axial refractive errors which means that the eye is either too short or too long. So opposite to the hyperopic eye which is too short, the myopic eye is actually too long. Therefore the light rays are meeting in front of the retina instead of on the retina. So now let's see how we can help these patients. Let's start with hyperopia. Again this is a hyperopic eye with light rays focusing behind the retina. To help this patient, we need to increase his refraction. We can do this by putting a plus lens in front of his eye. Plus lenses are thicker in the middle than in the periphery and they focus light rays. Now the light rays coming at the eye are not parallel anymore, but they are converging. And therefore, if we still have the same refractive power in the eye, the light rays will now focus on the retina. Now what about this myopic patient? How can we help him? As you can see, the light rays are refracted too much and the focus point is actually in front of the retina. So we need to move it back. We can do that by putting a minus lens in front of the eye. Opposite to the plus lenses, minus lenses are thinner in the middle and thicker in the periphery and they make parallel light rays diverge. So if the eye does the exact same thing as before, these diverging light rays now perfectly focus on the retina. Of course there's also astigmatism, but that's a more complicated topic that we're going to treat in another video. For now, let's just look at the basics. In the normal eye, all the light rays are focused on the retina, no matter in which axis they hit the eye. In patients with astigmatism, one of the axes might perfectly hit the eye, but 90 degrees to this axis, refractive power is different and the light rays miss the retina. Now let's have a look at accommodation. Accommodation describes the range wherein the eye can focus. You have to excuse my poor drawing skills, but I've tried to draw five everyday objects that you see in different distances. At around 10 centimeters, you might have a needle that you need to pull a thread through. At about 25 centimeters is where you would read a book. At about one meter is where your computer screen is at. At a distance of around five meters, you might see a tree. And depending on where you live, the mountains are usually hundreds or thousands of meters away. Please note that for refraction, everything that is further away than five meters can be considered infinity. So what you see here in this first line is an amitropic or normal eye in its relaxed state with the lens as flat as possible. Its focal length is at infinity. If this normal eye starts activating its ciliary muscle and thereby increasing the refractive power of the lens, it can focus on anything between infinity and about 25 centimeters. Anything that is closer than 25 centimeters is a little bit blurry. This whole process of focusing in different distances is called accommodation. 
Now let's have a look at what a myopic patient can see. A patient with a myopia of one diopter has its focal length in the relaxed state of the eye at one meter. Note that you calculate the focal length by dividing one through the refractive error in diopters. So a patient with two diopters of myopia has its focal point at 50 centimeters. For a patient with four diopters, the furthest he can see is 25 centimeters. For now, let's keep it simple and have the distance focal point at one meter. So this patient can usually see computer screens without glasses very well. If he wants to focus on something closer, he can also activate his ciliary muscle and accommodate. And actually he has some kind of an advantage over the normal eye as he can see close objects sharper. However, the disadvantage is that distant objects are getting blurrier the further they are away from the eye. Now let's have a look at the hyperopic eye. This is a bit weird and usually takes some time to think about. A hyperopic eye has its far point behind infinity. Now what does that mean? It doesn't mean that he can see any far away galaxies. It means that it's just a virtual place that doesn't really exist. However, the young hyperopic patient can use his ciliary muscle to increase the refractive power of the lens and therefore accommodate to see well in the distance. That's why we call those patients farsighted. Now let's see what happens if we lose our accommodation. That's absolutely normal and usually starts at an age of around 45 and we call that presbyopia. So once again, presbyopia means that you lose the ability to accommodate and increase the refractive power of your lens. This is mostly due to the loss of elasticity of the lens material. Let's see what the loss of accommodation means for the emetropic, the myopic and the hyperopic patient. If we look at the normal eye, we can see that it can still see perfectly fine in the distance, but everything that gets closer starts to get blurry. This is when people start to need reading glasses. For the myopic patient, it's different. He was never able to see the distance clearly without glasses, and that's not going to change after the age of 45. But because the far point of the myopic eye is pretty close, the myopic patient is still able to read without glasses until well after 50. In our current everyday lives, this might even be an advantage. Because he doesn't need reading glasses, he can just take the glasses off. Now let's have a look at the hyperopic patients. These suffer the most from presbyopia because after losing their accommodation, they can't even focus in the distance anymore. So they are usually the first ones to get their reading glasses and pretty soon have progressive lenses. All right, that was already it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something. If you did, like the video. If you want some more content like that, subscribe and hit the bell icon. And if you have any suggestions, please leave comments down below. See you in the next one.